This is Curtis coming at you from Ace Bread Studios, once again covering the 2021 NFL season. I like my uh, first coverage of the week to be on my Miami Dolphins, but Santa Claus, he brought me coal to see it, put coal in my stock and my sign died. I was only able to get it up and running today, so I wasn't able to do some podcasts. I had spent a lot of time doing research on a preview of the Saints-Dolphins game tonight, huge game, made more bigger by what I'm going to cover today. But it's too late to get it done. So my first coverage is going to be the Bills versus the Patriots. What an epic game it was. Bills fans must be ecstatic. And if I was a Patriots fan, I wouldn't hang my head too low considering what you did to get here. You were operating with a rookie quarterback. Two heavyweight teams in the AFC and especially the AFC East. And the Bills just really had more firepower. Now, I'm going to do a little quick caveat last time. I did the podcast on the Bills. I had I said I felt bad that they lost, considering all the hype and excitement. I was really not certain they're going to be able to get back to the point that they are right now. And I got like five thumbs up from some uh, from from Finn fans. Guy made a comment like, "How can you feel bad for uh, Bills fans uh, that lost if you're a Dolphins fan?" I kind of get it, but you got to understand my perspective. The whole totally insane football thing where I don't like somebody because they like another team, that's long gone. I got three kids, I'm 50 years old. You know, the world, America, has been such under heavy weight. I have friends that are Jets fans and Bills fans. And to me, it's always about good people. Good people are the primary number one thing that I deal with in this channel and that I deal with in life. Football, the whole game of football, takes precedence over the fandom. Football, to me, is an art form. And I don't get angry at somebody who likes Mozart, even though I like uh, Beethoven or somebody who likes Bach. It's an art to me. And the sport takes precedence. And people take precedence. Now, within the framework of being a fan, Miami Dolphins are it. I'm, I've never seen a Super Bowl. I'm waiting to see it like you wouldn't believe. But I'm never going to compromise good people. I'm never going to compromise the concept of football and evaluating properly. And not to mention, Ace Bread pays me and they want me to cover many teams and eventually many sports. But when I give somebody a product, I try to present it for entertainment, for them, and to give them good evaluation. I want them to feel good without compromising the truth. So, Bills fans have been fantastic to me. Finns fans have been fan fantastic to me. Bengals, fans of all, all kinds of persuasions. And so for me, football and people take precedence. I'm never going to hate somebody because they're a Jets fan. I'm never going to want to see someone suffer because they're a Bills fan. It's just not in me anymore. It's about people and football. And within the context... Yes, I would like to see my Dolphins beat the Bills and the Patriots, but I'm never going to compromise my first two pillars of reality, which is people, and then within this framework, football. So, let's get into the game. Bills versus Patriots was a great football game. And I don't think either team should be unhappy with how it turned out. I mean, yeah, you always want your team to win, but Mac Jones is a rookie, and the stats didn't look good. It was, was it uh, 14, uh, 14 for 32, 145 and two ends. But when you watch the, the way the game played out, he was under pressure a lot. We've seen that with Allen, you know, from Bill's fans, uh, fans' perspective. There were some drops. He'd missed some balls. But there was a lot of pressure, and pressure externally as this was a big game. And the kids come a long way. So I liked him, liked the way he played for the most part. Obviously, he needs to do better. But with his style of play, it's all about the brains, manipulating pre-snap and post-snap. That's going to take a little bit of time. So the kid did all right, uh, not as good as you want. Damian Harris, he had uh, 18 for 103, 5.7 yards per carry, three TDs. He played really well, but Ramadre Stevenson, him not being in there, you could feel that there was a difference. They, they missed him. 
that big body really saps the will from the defense. And so the Bills got a little bit of break on that. I'm not saying it's going to change the course of the game if he was in or not, but it was a piece that was missed. And then, you know, the defense of the Patriots had opportunities, but they didn't really seal the deal. They made mistakes. Uh, the, what's his name? The rookie uh, D-tackle went off sides on the fourth and seven. Somebody, I can't remember who his name was, had, a, had hands on the ball late in the fourth quarter and dropped it. And this is where the Bills really took advantage or had that next level that put them over the top against the Patriots. Three things. One, they were able to put pressure on um, Jones and really get him off his base. And the Patriots weren't able to do that. Allen had some pressure, but his mobility skills really made that little bit of pressure almost non-existent and turn into an asset. And then the defensively, uh, Micah Hyde was able to have two interceptions and two pass defenses, and really his game took was, was the best of all the defenders on the field. And so the defense had the most impact from the Bills. And then when you look at their receiving group, Patriots need some weapons. Yeah, Mac Jones, you know, he didn't have a great day, but his weapons looked depleted. He didn't, you saw guys getting covered all day. And you need weapons in this game, and that's what the Bills had. I mean, Isaiah McKenzie had one unbelievable day. He went from the doghouse to the penthouse. People were like on top of Sean McDermott for benching him and some comments he made post game, all this stuff. Well, you know what? It looks like he knew what he was doing because. He let the kid back in, and the kid took off and had an amazing day. And they were missing, you know, some pieces. Cole Beasley wasn't in, and he stepped in, and they had Diggs, and, you know, they had Sanders, and they had Knox, and there was a whole set of pieces. But when you go and you look at the Patriots, they really didn't have that. But, you know, they're going to build towards it. So that was another aspect that they had over the Patriots. And then there was just Josh Allen. It's not a knock again on Jones. A young kid, you know, he's finding his way and he's having a good season. But Josh Allen had his moment. People have been down on him. He's kind of getting knocked, you know, a big contract. And he was a fluky year. And the team was up and down. But when you watch the games, for the most part, Allen was playing very, very good under some inclement conditions. And today, he had his day. He came out. He showed power to run the football like a, like a fullback. Then he also had the ability to get out of trouble the arm to throw across the field, the vision to see it. He made big play after big play. And the receiving group, they made big plays as well. And then you tack in Singletary. You know, he didn't have a great day running, but he contributed. And he was good in the passing game. And he added Allen's rushes, a few rushes by Moss, a few rushes by Singletary. And you had a physical style offense that was able to match what the Patriots brought. And then when you add in what Allen was able to do through the air, this put them over the top. The pass rush, big plays on defense, uh, receiving group, uh, just a deep and high-end talent was way better than the Patriots. And then you just put Allen. That was just too much for this team. But the Patriots, to their credit, they played well, they were in it. They got back. It was, was it a 14-20? Then it was 21-26. They played really, really well. Some, some weird calls, I thought, um, but that's not to you know, flip the game either way. They played well. They're a tough team, still a dangerous team, young quarterback ready to build, but this was the Bills' day. They came out. They were aggressive to start off with. And Allen looks so comfortable. And it goes back, if you look at the production from this week and you compare it to the KC game, it was very similar. Now, he threw a lot more in this game than against KC, but still, both had 300-yard days. Allen had 300 against KC, just about, a little bit over, and a little bit over in this game against the Patriots. 
He had three touchdowns, no picks against KC, three touchdowns, no picks against the Patriots. And then you look at, he had 11 rushes against KC, and he had 12 rushes uh, against the Patriots. Then you look at the, the, the layout of how they ran the football, and I think it was Moss, he had um, 11 carries against KC, and then this week, Singletary had 12 carries. Singletary had six carries against KC. Moss had three. There was this emphasis on the physical offense, and it paid dividends. This is the style of offense that they've always won. They, they've won every game with. It's every time they decide to chuck and duck, play fun football, that they struggle or lose. This is their format, and in this format, I don't think there's any team in this league that is way out of their class. I, uh-oh, hope that's not a bad sign for tonight. Whew. All right, I gotta keep going. Show must go on. But with this physical format, Bills can beat anyone. They can play with anyone. Will they beat him? I don't know. And you always have to wonder, with this passing game, if they get into heavy winds or snow, are they gonna be able to keep it going? To me, I mean, they might get it one home game, and then play on the road, and ultimately that could be good news for them because they've proven they can beat KC in KC. Yes, it's a different time, different games, but I think that confidence is there. So this game really shows Buffalo fans, shows the NFL, shows uh, doubters of Allen that they've got what it takes. Will they? It's a different story. But winning the division twice in a row, taking it from the Patriots, and Allen having the kind of game he is having, and the season, when you really think, he, I, you know, he's having a very, very good season. And I think that ultimately, the Bills fans could get what they want, which is a rematch in KC, and it could lead to their appearance in the Super Bowl. Tip my hat. To, to Bills fans and to Allen. And Finn fans, you know, you say you don't want them to be happy. This win gives our Dolphins the opportunity to control our destiny, to win tonight against the Saints, to go against the Titans, and then get that big game against the Patriots where we can prove that we are truly second in this division. Will it happen? We'll see. But this opportunity was brought to us by a Bills victory. Very impressed with what the Bills done. I'm just concerned they will go back to fun ball after getting this big win that's been their MO. But I think if they stick with this format, they continue to rush the football, look out NFL. So Bills fans, Allen's fans, uh, Josh Allen fans, I say congratulations. You guys deserved it. You earned it. You've proved to be the best team in this division that could all change in the postseason so we'll see but in the regular season two times in a row is not easy given how tough it is year in and year out pay down the big money and so far it's paying off just pray that Dable doesn't go to fumble so congratulations Bills fans Finns fans uh, it's all night tonight let's hope we get it uh Thanks for staying to the end. Please like, comment, subscribe. Comments mean the most. They really do. I really enjoy talking to good people. That's one of the reasons why I find this a joy to do. And I learn from you guys, and I really, some, many of my podcasts come from comments and conversations. Subscribes and likes help us with Google Overlords, keeps us in business, and I like that too. So please subscribe and like. So this is Curtis saying, congratulations, Bills fans. Dolphins fans, this is all night. Let's make it happen. We're in control of our destiny. destiny. Catch you next time. This is Curtis saying, be well. Start building your own online sports book today by getting signed up with acebred.com service that allow you to book action on sports from all around the world.